the Harriman Expedition, May 30th to July 30th, 1889. Following Edward Henry Harriman's successful takeover of the Union Pacific Railroad in the late 1800s, Harriman was one of the richest men in the United States, his doctors advised a restorative rest. He planned a family pleasure cruise to Alaska, but at Seahart Merriam's suggestion, the cruise, in Anne Makepeace's words, expanded into a hugely ambitious scientific expedition, a Noah's Ark of scientists, writers, and artists. Convinced of the value of a scientific voyage, Harriman asked Merriman, one of the scientists Edward Curtis earlier rescued on Mount Rainier and a founder of the Smithsonian, to select the party members. He invited John Burroughs, the most important naturalist of the time, John Muir, the founder of the Sierra Club and a well-known conservationist, writer, and authority on glaciers. George Bird Grinnell, the nation's foremost scholar of Native American culture, also in the Rainier group Curtis rescued, and more than 30 other preeminent botanists, geologists, ornithologists, scientists of all kinds, and artists. Miriam also invited Edward Curtis, the youngest member of the group, to be the expedition's official photographer. Curtis was not paid for his work, and as he would later find when making a similar decision, suffered dearly for it. Planning to sell photographs to members of the group, he invested heavily in new equipment for his studio and the trip. Harriman hired the steamship SS George W. Elder for the voyage and refitted it for the expedition to feature lecture rooms, a library with more than 500 volumes on Alaska, a stable for animals, taxidermy studios, luxury rooms for the passengers, and a dark room for Edward Curtis. The scientists worked hard during the long days of the two-month voyage. The artists drew and painted, the poets and naturalists recorded their observations, glaciers were climbed, native villages visited, and on one occasion, on July 26, 1899, the expedition landed at Cape Fox at an abandoned Tlingit village. Many pieces of artwork and totem poles were still there and, much to the horror of some expedition members, summarily plundered. In the evenings, the scientists, writers, and artists offered talks and lectures. One notable lecture was George Bird Grinnell's on the culture and ceremonial life of the Blackfeet Indians which surely caught Curtis's attention. Curtis presented lantern slides taken during the voyage and developed in the ship's darkroom. Harriman also brought with him an early Edison wax cylinder recorder, capturing with it Tlingit songs and music, no doubt inspiring Curtis to use one like it not long after in his Southwest field work and later throughout the West. The expedition changed Curtis's life irrevocably. He created his first sustained photographic study of Native American life and culture. Working among some of the most notable naturalists, scientists, and artists of his era, immersed in a world of learning and discovery, he received a remarkable education. Less than a year later, the Harriman Expedition experience will lead Curtis to an equally extraordinary opportunity the final piece in the puzzle that finds him initiating the great project of his life, the amateur ethnology and fascinating photography that holds the story of this exhibition, the 20 volumes of the North American Indian. <laughs>